What preoccupies us is the way we define success. From Ariana Huffington. Here we are. We are here. Today is a new day. I am Nikki G, your host. Welcome to The Lone Doctrine, a safe space to bridge the gap between your authentic self and your mental health. We are your food for thought exploration station in order to make today better than yesterday. Welcome back. It's another week in a new year, and I'm so grateful to have you here. I didn't mean to rhyme it, but it happened. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, for showing up, for making the choice to make today better than yesterday in your life and inadvertently causing the ripple effect to make others' lives a little bit easier, a little bit better. We have been focusing this year a little differently than we have in the past. A lot of times when we're seeking self-care, we're seeking to solve a problem. We're focusing on the negatives, whether we realize it or not. And I do this as well. And I've been doing it a lot more lately. And I've been sucked down the negative hole so much so I've had to create boundaries. I've had to step back. I've had to push pause on a lot of things in my life in order to stop and fill my own cup. Now, easier said than done. And everyone's journey is going to be a little bit different. But the most important element in all of that is first making the choice towards betterment. We first have to choose because life is a series of choices. And this year, I wanted to invite you, connect you, and explore with you the idea of focusing on the gains rather than the gaps, focusing on the positives rather than the negatives. Now, this isn't to say that I'm just going to be wearing rose-colored glasses and everything's going to be hunky-dory. This means that we're trying to shift our perspective to give us the motivation and the energy to keep moving forward in a positive way. Because we all know life, the world, holy moly, we could not have predicted the craziness that has gone on everywhere within the last three years. It's been bonkers. You name it, it's probably happened. And it's been a lot. Admittedly so, it's been a lot. So I wanted to create this space where not only you could connect that bridge between your authentic self and your mental health, but also connect you to all these different ideas, all these different coping skills, all these different practices and exercises to create that mindset of positivity because we need it now more than ever. Last week, we were talking about making that list, about finding the list of gratitude, not just kind of mindlessly writing gratitude in the morning and writing gratitude at night, but really, really taking the time to Write down the gratitude and be in it. Tell stories behind it. Feel it. Talk about it. Expand on it. Because as good as writing down gratitude is, I have found myself that sometimes it's just become a little mindless. I've created it as a habit, more like a to-do. And I was realizing it wasn't helping as much as it used to. And that's another thing. As we're seeking these self-care tools, things can change and things will evolve. Some things that may work today may not work a week from now, may not work a year from now. Who knows? But the idea is, is realizing it's not about the quick fix. It's about accepting that it's ever evolving, accepting that as you grow, Your tools need to change and grow as well. And it's okay if one thing works today and it may not work tomorrow. Don't put such a heavy pressure on yourself to find that quick fix. Don't put such a heavy pressure on yourself when you put time and quality time into something and it may not work. That is okay. It has nothing to do with you as a person. 
meaning it doesn't mean that your work is a failure. It just means that you're evolving. Sometimes when things aren't working, it's actually a good sign. It's a good sign that we're reaching new levels and reaching new chapters in our lives and needing new tools in order to correlate with that time in our life. And that's great. So I hope you really took some time last week to write down this list of gratitude, of really being in it, of telling stories about it. Something that's really been helping me lately is my wife and I have been taking a gratitude walk. So after dinner, we try to be really good about walking in general, but we decided to add in a little gratitude of just walking and talking about the gratitude. And in all honesty, sometimes it's just one thing. We're going through a really hard time. All of us are in some sort of way. And sometimes it feels like there's nothing to be grateful for. But you couldn't be, I couldn't be more wrong when I'm feeling that way. Because a lot of times, even the simplest things in our lives, we take for granted. The simplest things like running water or a bed to sleep on or a roof over our head. And you know, Some people don't have those things. And so finding those small things, a meal, finding those small things, a snack, are so important because we get in this mindset of taking so much for granted that it puts us in this state of chaos that we're always wanting more, needing more. And then all of a sudden, before we realize it, we're in this mindset of lack, 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 and lack. So I wanted to talk this week about time. Because if you're listening to this, and you listened to the last episode, and you didn't take the time to write down your gratitude list or share your gratitude with someone, I am going to challenge you. We have another assignment for the week, and we're going to try to do assignments, exercises, call them what you will, every week just to get you moving along, get you motivated, keeping the brain working, all the above, whatever, however you want to define it. It's good to continue these exercises. Our body and our brain need exercises daily. So this week, if you didn't take on the challenge of last week, I encourage you to take on the challenge I'm going to give you this week. If you heard that challenge and said, I don't have time for that. I don't want to do that. Who has time for that? I tried it and I couldn't do it. I'm just too busy. Life is too crazy. I'm too stressed out. I don't have anything to be grateful for. The list in our mind can go on and on and on and on. Well, it's time to break it down and almost give ourselves proof in the pudding that we actually do have time. And the best way to do this, and something that was eye-opening for me personally, was journaling our time. And you're probably like, I don't have time to journal my time. Thank you very much. But it's only for maybe a day. You can even try it for half a day. So here's the idea. When we find ourselves saying, I don't have enough time, the actuality is that it's not about time, it's about priority. Let me say that again. It's not about a lack of time, it's about a lack of priority. So take one day this week, one day to just jot down really quickly the day-to-day things you do. Now, you could be super, 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 super anal about it, or you could just be very general. You wake up, take 20 minutes to make breakfast, you take 30 minutes to exercise, so on and so forth. I even want you to write down the times that you're on your phone, how much time you're spending on social media, how much time you're in the car driving on a commute to work, to school, wherever you're going, how much time you're sitting there and doing nothing at all, which is okay to do if you're in a rest period or just vegging out, how much time you're watching TV, how much time you're watching movies, how much time you are doom scrolling, whatever it might be, I just want you to jot it down. 
Now, in a day, yes, it might be eye-opening going, wow, I really spent a lot of time doom scrolling. But you might need a few days to see how that adds up. Because there are little things that we do in our lives that actually don't require as much time and attention, and they're actually taking our time away from the more positive things and the things we can be doing to fill our cup. So if you find yourself spending a lot of time on social media, what ends up being the culprit of taking up a lot of time in our lives lately, then you can look there and be like, you know what? I could take five less minutes on my doom scrolling and take a little bit of time to write down my gratitude list or to take a gratitude walk or to just share with somebody, whether it be a friend or a roommate or a family member or a partner or a spouse, whatever, whoever it may be, to just add that into my daily to-dos. Add that into my daily work that makes me a better person for myself and for everyone around me. Because if I were to say, hey, if you do this, if you take this, this is going to make your day so much better. You'd probably be like, oh, that sounds interesting. How fast does it work? How long does it work? Well, here's the thing. There are things we can do every single day, choices that we can make that do just that. It may not be something that is the quick fix that we all look for, but over time, our perspective starts to change. Over time, we lessen the bad times. We lessen the bad days. Now, there's this idea next week we're going to start talking about is that happiness, the pursuit of happiness, and how that can be a challenge. Because I believe, and the more I read and study about it, happiness is fleeting. And something that we can strive for without the pressure of this constant pursuit of this happiness that somewhat sometimes seems like we just quite can't get there, that there's always something missing, is exactly what it is, but not. Huh? Think of it like this. If somebody were to tell you a joke and it was really funny and you were cracking up and life was good for like 20 seconds, you had 20 seconds filled with pure happiness, but that person told you the joke over and over and over and over again, it would lose its funniness. It would lose its umph. It would lose its happiness. Happiness comes and goes. Happiness is a feeling that we feel. Something to think about as you're pursuing this mindset of gratitude is more so contentment. How can we find this place in our lives to be content so we can allow more of the positive, so we can allow more good days rather than bad, so we can allow more good things rather than bad things, so we can allow more happiness to come and be okay with it going and trusting that it's going to come again. These are big ticket items. I get it. I've been reading about it. It's all a big giant exploration that we're going to do together. But for this week, try to journal down your time. Try to find the pockets of time to start replacing things with the gain instead of the gap. And keep fighting the good fight.